that, that uh, makes sense to the human reader. It comes in eight different flavors, which we'll, we'll go over those. Um, variables are assigned using the equal sign. So when you say dollar sign aptly named word equals whatever comes after the equals, that's what you're putting in the basket of your variable. Okay, so assigned using the equal sign. So any questions so far? Good, we're good, variables, awesome, okay. So there are eight types of variables. There's a Boolean variable. We're gonna talk more about Boolean um, a little bit later on, but a Boolean is true or false. It's a very black and white thinking kind of variable. There are two ways to represent it. You can represent it with the word true, which I've done here. I could also say one. One is true, zero is false. So you can use the word true and false, or you can use the, um, the integers one and zero one and zero. They both mean the same thing, and that's a Boolean variable. Diana? Yes? Does it have to be the word true? You know, I don't know, but let's say yes so that that's what you do. <laughs> it's from a human readable standpoint, I'm not, I don't think it cares about the case, to tell you the truth, but, but do that anyway, because that makes it very clear that you mean it a Boolean true and not the string true, okay? Um, so then for, you can have an integer, so in this case, uh, as you saw, um, four kitchens webstack equals true, num pets equals three. And um, what very quickly I'll point out that other programming languages, you have to um, you have to type cast your variables. In other words, if I want that to be an integer, I have to tell it be an integer. In PHP, you do not. And this is where geeks will have big, huge flame wars in IRC. Like, there are people that say that what I do is not real programming. I'm really not, you know, I'm just like writing tags, basically, because I don't have to do things like cast my variables. And I can, I can make numpence equal three, and then I could make numpence equal the string Alberta, Canada, if I wanted to, and PHP doesn't care. Most other programming languages do care, but PHP doesn't. Uh, and also, flow can be a, can, uh, variables can be a float, so you can use decimal points in your numbers. And that in programming language is called a float. Mm -hmm. um, how do you tell the difference between, like, if you use one for the true value of the Boolean and if you want the number one? I mean, how does it you know that you actually meant true if you're one for the Boolean? How does it know as opposed to the number one? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it doesn't, but if it's going to depend on how you use it later. So, in other words, if you save, um, you know, if you're saving data in a table, based table like saying, you know, um, uh, did this person attend? true or false, and then you use it in your code as one and zero, then it will use it as a true or false. If you use it then later as an integer, it will use it as an integer. It's very flexible that way. Okay, so this is a string, you, this is the mo probably the most common kind of variable that you're going to use, okay? Now, <laughs> now, so quotes in PHP will make you crazy, right? There are single quotes and there are double quotes, and there are times to use single quotes and there are times to use double, use double quotes. I'm going to leave that to your after presentation exploration of things, but what I will say is that in this case, I have the string in the double quotes. Performance-wise, your PHP will run a little bit faster if you use single quotes. Um, and, you know, some we, this is another flame war thing single quotes versus double quotes. But for your purposes, it doesn't really matter too much. They need, but it, it is characters in between quotes. If I put num pets equals quote three quote, is that a string or an integer? It's a string. A string, so that's what makes it the string. Right, the quotes make it a string. And then there's an array. An array is a list. Array can be a list of strings, integers, array can be a list of other arrays, an array can be a list of objects, an array can be a list of pretty much anything you can do anywhere else. Um, we're gonna keep it relatively simple in this case, right, and we're gonna use predominantly strings and arrays. This is an array, which this is the one we saw. This terminology, C-U-R-R, cur books, okay, this is, um, uh, be, uh, very common, this means current, right? It's just the way programmers are speaking to each other, um, but you'll see it a lot. Like you see numpets, okay? That's very common. 
Now there's one other thing I want to point out here about variables. What I'm doing here is called camel case. That's why the, this is called PHP for non-programmers and it's N-O-N then capital P. Drupal coding standards is that you actually use underscores between your variable names. So Drupal coding standard would be num underscore pets or cur underscore books, okay? And that's the right way to do it and the way you should do it. I love camel case. I disagree with Drupal on this. No one, very few people agree with me, but so I like to use camel case this way. The code doesn't care, um, but, but there is, in, in the Drupal community, there is a right way to do it, and this is not necessarily the right way, but it does work. And in many other languages, it would, you'd be more inclined to use that. No, actually that's not true. This is just my freak, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and the rest of the variables that we're, we won't discuss much today, um, this is an object, and I point this out because you will see this a lot, okay? The first, um, the first, the node, right? That has everything the node is going to display, the date, the created date, the text of the node, pretty much everything <coughs> associated with the node. And the way you get to the node ID is with this syntax. If you use that little arrow in between, okay? You'll see this a lot in Drupal code. Um, this is when we talked about there's object-oriented programming, which is somewhat different than the way we're going to do it. Um, and this is predominantly the, the way that you will see it in Drupal code. And this is, it's pretty straightforward in that it's, from looking at it, you can see that's the node ID, right? That's what that means. Another kind of variable are resources, like a database connection. Let's just skip over that. Or null, okay? So, and the null is also, you'll see that, you'll see that very common. Um, so the null is to make the variable empty, basically, is what it does, right? But it actually sets it equal to null, but for our purposes, we'll say it makes it empty, okay? Um, and there are a number of times that you'd want to do that. Um, sometimes if you're testing something, you'll say, you know, is this null or does it actually have some value? You know, did a, is a variable have a value or is it null? That's the, that's the, the most common time you'll see it. All right. Okay, new next geek question. How are you guys doing with the geek questions? Okay, you can try here. Okay, who are they? Okay, you get extra points if you know their names. <laughs> Eric is John one. Please. John Cleese is one. Uh, Michael Palin. Terry Gilliam. Kaylee Gilliam. Graham Chapman. Graham Chapman. Okay, so there's your array. Okay. We all get posted. Actually, this is the geek quiz. Is the geek? There's a geek quiz and there's the book ability. So there's really two good things going on simultaneously besides coding geekness. So this is the big bonus morning. Okay. Um, has anyone seen Holy Grail more than once? <laughs> has anyone seen Holy Grail more than 10 times? Has anyone seen Holy Grail with the script in their hands so that they didn't miss anything? <laughs> I love you guys. You guys get 100 bonus points for that. Okay, so arrays. And arrays have, um, for, for our purposes, arrays have the second highest, uh, second steepest learning curve functions. We'll have the, the next higher learning curve. Um, definitely work with arrays. When you write them and use them, they will make sense to you, right? They're a little bit tricky out of the box, but they're actually very, very easy to work with. And they're so common in Drupal.